first of all, Daryl, encouragement from the game last time out? Uh, not only a win, but, but, but some good things in it as well. We dug it out. Uh, pitch wasn't great, but obviously that's for both teams. I uh, wasn't happy first 45, to be honest with you. So a few harsh words to the lads sat, uh, on Saturday. Uh, and certainly the second half, the, the response was was very good and, and I managed to get the, the three points, which is obviously pleasing. I, I would imagine from a manager's point of view, you know, there are times where you're going to have to give the players a rattle that comes with the territory. What you want is that they respond to it. Yeah, I think, listen, I'm an emotional sort of guy. I work on emotions, you know, you see that with me interviews at times and I'm exactly the same with my players of, of how I manage. I'm a passionate guy and, you know, there's no there's no acting from me, if I'm honest with you, when at half-time, if I'm not happy, they, they're going to know about that. You know, sometimes it's a tactical tactical decisions that you, you're working on at half-time other than the times you're giving the players a volley up the arse because they're not, they're not performing how you want them to do. They're not showing you the energy levels uh, that you want them to be getting to and I thought with it being our third game in a week I thought it was a little bit flat I thought uh, we got the early goal and then we, we came off it there was no tempo to our play and then second half we you know that was with and without the ball second half we was a, was a lot better with and without the ball and, and obviously got the points but players respect you, by and large, I'd imagine, if you give it straight, don't you? I mean, you know, there's, only, there's only so much soft soap that yeah, you can definitely. give. At the end of the day, uh, players have got real good rapport with my players. Even my players will tell you that when they do the interviews with it. They, they know the detail and the, the work myself and my coaching staff that go into that. And, uh, and certainly players know that I'm here to make them better players. And sometimes there has to be words that are said that they're not going to like to hear, but they'll be, they'll be truthful. They'll be what I think. And most players, to be honest, most players that I've managed, if you, if you pull a player in your office and say, right, what do you want? Do you want me to modicule you or do you want me to give you the truth of why things aren't quite going well? Show them the video, show them the evidence and, and give it to them straight. And, and they said, right, let's let's go out there and work on it and let's make you better. So players players respect that, majority do. And the ones that don't, don't, don't stay with me too long, to be honest. Um, you've had a week to catch your breath between games. That's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's always good to to get on a training pitch, uh, you know, and get get working away with the lads, or, or be difficult uh, difficult that we, you know, we with the weather and, and the, the bad bad weather we're having this winter and last winter. I think it's we're getting on nearly, nearly close to nine months of, of me hand, tender here as a manager that we haven't been on a on a full size grass mm. pitch, you know, which is but we we work we, we're privileged that we've got a full full size 4G on the on the side of the, the the stadium that we that we use and obviously don't want to go on the pitch because uh, that damage the pitch so uh, we're getting a full week on the training pitch is always always beneficial uh, that's that's a good point actually because I know it's come up a few times and, and, and it's worth making about you know the, the the training ground and the actual pitches not being as it is for for being on the 4G practically what differences does that mean? Do you have to sort of watch the amount of usage of it? I know it's a very good surface that you've got there, but, but does it actually affect things in terms of, you know, looking after the players or whatever? Yeah, it always will because the bounce of the ball is different. Uh, sure. Uh, there's all, all issues that are different around that. The, you know, the sports science and the medical department will tell you that we're picking up one or two injuries because we're having to do that each day, which is it's part and parcel. We get we get on with it. Is mm. it ideal? No. Is it, uh, is it is a terrible shame that we... We couldn't do the work on the training pitch that the, the chairman was planning to do on the summer to put some finances into the training ground because we have a training ground that's obviously not fit for purpose for, for long, long spells. And uh, that's that's no good for, for the football club. It's no good for the manager and the coaching staff. And the chairman's, you know, he's, he's doing his best. But with, with COVID and the, the amount of problems and finances that we're, we're having as a, as a football club, obviously uh, hinders that. So we, we crack on. We, we do our best of what we possibly can do and to be fair to the lads really good professional lads we've got a real good environment with the squad and we, we crack on with that yes indeed and that's very good um, we are what a couple of days away from the, the, the transfer window closing will that be a good thing when it closes or are you, are you going to be able to make use of that time are you going to end up with a squad that's as strong or stronger after that than you've got now who knows what the window is going to bring you know I think it's, it's common knowledge that there's interest in, in, in some of our players but uh, for me the focus is on, on Saturday the, the window shuts at 11pm Monday night uh, we'll see where we are after that but my focus is to try and get three points against the team Mansfield that are in, in a bit of form so uh, 
we'll let the other stuff take care of itself. It normally does. Uh, obviously, a lot of work going on both sides of the coin on that. And uh, like I said, we'll see where we we lie Tuesday morning. Understood. Um, Mansfield Football Club was a big part of your life, wasn't it? We've had the town of Mansfield, the whole thing. Yeah, Mansfield, yeah. Born in a town, born in a rough estate in, in Mansfield in Ladybrook. Uh, it was... It was my granddad used to be a steward at the football club, and I used to go when I was six, six years old, and sit on the wooden wooden stands of the old field mill ground, and always dreamed about playing for him. To be fair to him, so he was a uh, managed to play 150 games for my hometown club. So it's a club. It's also a club that relegated me with Bristol Rovers into the conference as well. So and in our own club, <laughs> now I had. So uh, it was, uh, yes, yeah, uh, obviously Mansfield. Nigel's gone in there. They, they're doing, you know, he's, he's a crack manager he's doing a great job managing top clubs and he's he's got a healthy squad there they were, they were one of the league two favourites at the start of the season didn't start particularly too well uh, obviously changed the manager and Nigel's gone in there and, and got them organised and well drilled and they're, they're moving in their right direction in the league All the